Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm the Gav Major and this is a let's play in the British Tier 5 Heavy Cruiser, the Devonshire. Now this is a Tier 5 and 6 game of Domination on Shards. In the we have an Aoba, Legazania, Leander, Ismail, Fuso, Fuso, Gneisenhauer, North Carolina and a Visor. Um, Spawning on the left and moving over to the left flank which is uh, my usual play. Um, just because sometimes if you've got the speed you can get round and get a good side flank onto the objective which can assist against destroyers although there's no destroyers in this game it is a carrier game and it's noting that the enemy Fuso is breaking off now the Devonshire has sufficient armour or main armoured belt in order to ricochet 14 inch AP her deck can ricochet 15 inch AP uh, but she can't really take much on the nose unfortunately um, so when it comes to looking at the enemy team, North Carolina and the Gneisenhauer with their 15 and uh, 16 inch guns do concern me. Uh, but the two Fusos uh, don't. Uh, the Ismail, I can't remember the Ismail's guns off the top of my head, uh, but I'm probably going to treat her with caution as well. It's a very battleship heavy game, and obviously the carrier could be of a reasonable concern because it is a German carrier which has the potential to drop AP bombs. Seeing that I'm coming around this corner, potentially going to have a broadside on this Leander, so I'm going to start switching to arm piercing shells. We are an 8 inch gun cruiser after all. And as we come around the corner, we're probably going to get spotted, but it's going to be a little bit of realization for the Leander that she's now probably got herself into a crossfire. And there's our first sister of the game. Now I'm going to keep pushing up and seeing if I can get a bit of a tighter crossfire. I'm going to lead a bit more this time because these shells did land towards the rear. I think we'll take a chance with one more volley of AP but she's starting to turn in. Potentially turning back out but switching to HE. She's targeting us now. She's led a little bit too much. We're getting another two Sithdale so we're now going to angle against the Leander. Going to slow it down. And she's trying to drop a smoke screen, but we already know where she is. And there we go. Enemy cruiser destroyed. She did manage to get a couple of hits on us, but it's mostly recoverable damage, uh, so we're going to use the repair party. Fuso over here. Um, really could do of our New Mexico getting stuck into the fight, but we're going to have to wait and see what the Fuso does. Um, that Leander smoke screen is tempting. I might be able to say push in and start capping if I keep the smoke screen between me and the Fuso. Uh, yeah, I should be able to do that actually, so we'll, we'll give that a crack. So Devonshire's a county class cruiser, um, so she's equipped with eight eight inch guns mounted in two dual gun turrets, two four, two aft, and it's the the last heavy cruiser class to be built by the Royal Navy. Um, after the uh, counties, um, although things like the Surrey was designed as a potential evolution of the county class and the Albemarle as a Royal Navy counter to the Hipper class, um, those designs never really pulled off. Uh, the reason being is the Royal Navy didn't really agree with um, the use of heavy cruisers. Uh, they deemed that the the benefits of the rate of fire of a six inch gun cruiser meant that there was more sh um, more shells, more shell weight, more explosives going down range uh, over time in comparison uh, to an 8 inch gun, which is true based on the graphs. And so, because a 6 inch gun would reload faster, fire faster, and you could have more guns per turret because the, the guns are smaller. Um, so, obviously, that's why they went into this light cruiser uh, concept. And the although the 8 inch guns do have a benefit of um, individual shell damage um, at the average ranges of engagement uh, during the testing or comparison of 6 inch to 8 inch guns um, there was no real significant advantage of using 8 inch guns over 6 inch guns uh, because they deemed that the engagement ranges would be so close obviously things would change with the introduction of uh, radar making the uh, making shell accuracy over um, longer ranges um, obviously a lot better but that was something that was happening later on in the war and nothing you could really foresee uh, when the counterclass were being built 
Now, regarding the county class, uh, there's a couple of different subclasses, and Devonshire is a, a representation of um, more like a late build, late war refit, I guess you could say. Uh, with the county class, none of them were built with aircraft facilities, or not initially. Um, now, in the late 30s, early 40s, uh, some of the uh, county class were being retrofitted or refitted with the ability to carry aircraft in a uh, new hangar which was built in the location of the tripod mast and rear bridge um, and a catapult uh, just after the rear funnel. Um, now this was obviously before radar, um, however as radar became more of a, uh, a useful tool for uh, British heavy cruisers just British cruisers in general, um, what you saw was in later war actually some of the uh, county class that were fitted with hangars, having the hangars actually removed the reinstatement of the rear bridge, reinstatement of the rear tripod mast. And of course um, this does make room for um, AA complements, uh, in this case in the location where the rear hangar would be on a county class cruiser. Um, there's actually two octoplet 40mm uh, pom-pom along with a good smattering of 20mm Erlikin. Now in regards to her tier, um, she doesn't have that bad an AA complement. Um, it's uh, surprisingly all right. It's better than the Surrey at tier six, I guess you could say. Uh, she's got four octopolar uh, 40 mm pom pom. She's got uh, four dual gun, four inch dual purpose guns, and a generally quite a good smattering of uh, 20 mm Erlikin all over, which is uh, very nice, I guess you could say. Um, now, my commander build ha is kind of an AA build. I have got no fly zone as a commander trait, and I've also inspired with King and the new Archipelago Blue Steel uh, cruiser commander. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, I think it's Takeo, um, which improves rudder shift and cruiser AA potential. Um, so I like these two traits, um, well, especially I like I like the Archipelago Blue Steel one because she allows you to keep like an agility build at the same time as having uh, improved AA. Uh, so that's one thing I do like about it. So, and that's what I've gone for. Oh, get a fire. I'm also spotting the carrier, which uh, is very tempting. Gonna get one more body out on the North Carolina though before we start engaging the visor. Might see if we can get one more volley out on the North Carolina because that is taking out the North Carolina at the moment is probably the priority for the team, especially for me, considering uh, six inch AP and that volley looks like it's going to be nigh on impossible to actually dodge. <sighs> Lucky we only took one there. Thankfully, she went broad. And now we can start pushing down onto the visor. Um, hoping to maybe work her over now obviously she's going to be quite scary in regards to her AA aircraft um, but I'm kind of hoping she does come after me and maybe I can then showcase um, the AA rating of the Devonshire especially with my command build so she's launching a incomplete flight of torpedo aircraft so she's obviously late game she's kind of Worried about not worried about aircraft, but she's probably expending uh, expended a lot of her aircraft. Now, if she was clever, she would try and torpedo me from my port side. The reason being is that would make me potentially turn to my port, and therefore make me turn away from her. The aircraft looked to be quite committed. Whether he's actually led it enough, I think we can just sliver through, which is quite nice. Ooh, that's not something I was looking forward to. He has got a full flight of AP bombers there. Uh, also, Fuso's not really paying attention. Uh, I guess their cruise is the A over. Which is definitely what we're going to have to be switching to now. Now, with the enemy AP aircraft, I've got to try and stay almost semi broadside onto the aircraft. I will put my um, sonar on because of the AOBA's torpedoes, although they're rearward facing, I'm expecting them to potentially have a crack at firing those now. I'm gonna do one more volley of AP. Uh, that's got rid of the AOBA. Uh, 
I am broadside on, but we're all right. Um, we will use some of these uh, peels to try and get some HP back. We'll continue engaging the visor. Visor there getting a very nasty hit on me. It's just one of the upsides of having a, a, a AP bombs, I guess. But we are actually working through those aircraft, and I'm hoping um, we can get advantage here. That is the last heal, though. Now he's trying to torpedo me from my Starward side, which is partially advantageous. There we go, she's gone. If I can destroy these aircraft, that is the last aircraft that he's got. He didn't drop torpedoes. That's interesting. And that goes there goes his last aircraft. Right, I can't complain about that. I should survive that engagement. Going to start kiting away from the Fusa. I suspect we're going to have his attention. But he is in torpedo range, so we are going to... I'm just expecting him to turn this way because of us. Now, you can hear our AA uh, really working over the uh, enemy fighters. I suspect he dropped extra fighters, because, uh, of course, aircraft carriers will drop fighters when they're spotted automatically, and then, of course, they can drop extra fighters. Um, so I wonder if he dropped extra fighters to try and keep me spotted to assist his battleships. But the Fuso is completely ignoring a broadside uh, Devonshire, which is uh, rather surprising, even though I'm only six kilometers away. But there she goes. Very nice. Right here. Well, we talked about the AA complement, the aircraft, and some of the modifications. Obviously, with the counter class cruisers, uh, they were actually up armoured um, early war, um, or just before the outbreak of war. Uh, they found um, mysteriously that they could add a load of extra armoured plating uh, just above the waterline, um, and also on, underneath the waterline. So they did increase the, uh, the the belt thickness. Now, the counter class are known for having a very high waterboard. Um, some of them did have the sterns cut down in order, like cut back a deck after wide turret in order to um, just improve the amount of spare displacement there was. Um, however, that didn't always um, happen, to, didn't happen to every single one. But yeah, with the very high freeboard, this did become an issue. Uh, when HMS Dorsetshire uh, tried to um, recover survivors from the Bismarck after torpedoing the Bismarck, um, some of the crew of the Bismarck were so um, tired um, from obviously swimming and combat and sort of stuff like that and the freezing ocean um, they didn't have the energy to actually climb the scramble nets to get on board the Dorsetshire um, so uh, I think there's actually a, a case where one of the uh, sailors on board Dorsetshire jumped overboard uh, to assist German survivors on the scramble nets um, I can't I think he managed to get back on board um, I, I, I can't remember if he got back on board Dorsetshire or whether he was picked up by a friendly destroyer. Um, but um, yeah, you, being a bit reckless uh, to uh, help save um, an enemy um, sailors. Um, but I guess it's all part of the like camaraderie. I think that, like that's one thing you kind of find in um, some naval stories. Like when, once the battle's done, um, there's like a shared uh, camaraderie where they're no longer enemies uh, the enemy is the ocean uh, in which they now are trying to uh, survive and so you end up in these cases where um, both in world war two and world war one uh, where um, after the battle um, usually british british crews were quite well or can be known for um, actually going out of their way to uh, save um, survivors although i'm not <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna it's just something that comes comes to mind um and I'm sure it happened with most navies and most wars, and I'm sure there's also some cases where it went the other way for all sides. Well, we actually capped this uh, with 37 seconds left to go, and the enemy gunner is now somewhere in the bottom left corner of the map. I don't think we're going to be uh, finding that. Um, so, it's been quite a nice game in Devonshire. I think we've uh, managed to showcase quite a few different things. It was a destroyer-free game, uh, but it was a carrier game, so that... That kind of made it interesting, and also a very battleship heavy game. Um, with all the caps, it's simply a countdown, I guess you can say. So, we might as well take a lovely look over the uh, Devonshire. She has got the slightly larger bridge refit. 
and there we go that's all she wrote so uh let's go to the end screen and see what we managed to get there uh looks like we managed to get three kills and 103,000 damage so fingers crossed that should make us a nice pretty penny um we didn't get any torpedo hits as far as i'm aware no but 132 hits on target I managed to shoot down 12 aircraft um once the aircraft carriers start to focus on us um obviously the ap bombs of the german carriers really do hurt the devonshire uh, she can be a bit of a big target i guess you could say um but i think that's the um, I think that can really be said for most cruisers. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Getting two solo caps and four defending ribbons as well. Coming on top of the team with 3,053 ship XP. That does include a 1.5 multiplier. So, I'm not quite sure what that would put me in uh, without the 1.5 multiplier. Economy wise, walking away with a profit of 266,000 credits. That's after a ship service cost of 35,000 credits. Um, and making a pretty penny across the board. I know that some people give the Devonshire a, a bit of a harsh time um, I'd like her but then what do you expect I, I'm a bit biased I guess you could say but I've been able to make her work and I do find her quite enjoyable if you have enjoyed this video feel free to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy this content feel free to subscribe down in the description is the command build and the ship modules taken along with the link to Patreon if you want to support channel Patreon and the email address for the channel if you want to send in any of your own game captures have you had any good games in Devonshire that you would like to share as always, I'd like to say thank you to all the patrons and to all the subscribers. And until next time, I'm the Gaff Major, and back to the port. Hey, hey, steal the wave, here comes the galloping major. Bumpety, 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 bump. Get out of the way there, you fellows. Unless you want me to run you down, I guess this is the life. Now, hey, hey, steal the wave, here comes the galloping major.